Recently, Elon Musk shared that SpaceX is ready to send its Starship on its first ever orbital launch this month. Despite facing a risk of delay by pending regulatory approval from the FAA, Elon Musk still concentrates with his heart and soul in making preparations for the historic Starship flight. This test will involve the insanely powerful 70 meter tall super heavy booster as well, which has never made it off the ground. And SpaceX is currently preparing the first truly finished super heavy for its next steps. Let's find out more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Partially completed by early September, Super Heavy Booster 4 supported SpaceX's iconic full-stack fit test back on August 6th before returning to the build site, but has mostly just floated around Starbase's launch and test facilities in the seven weeks since its second trip to the pad. On September 10th, CEO Elon Musk himself suggested that SpaceX had plans to static fire the booster as early as mid-September, more than six weeks ago. Obviously, nothing even approximating super heavy testing transpired. Instead, at least relative to rapid fire star base operations in the two years prior, SpaceX has almost absentmindedly worked on the booster, mostly completing partially finished wire runs that run its full 69 meter length. In the last few weeks, though, the type of work being done on Super Heavy B4 has changed. On September 26th, to give the Starbase construction crew more room to install giant arms on the orbital pad's launch tower, SpaceX removed Super Heavy B4 from the launch mount for the second time, temporarily relocating it to an unused patch of the pad's old landing zone. B4 hasn't been moved since. However, while probably a bit slower than SpaceX would have liked, large-scale work on the Starship launch tower was effectively completed last week with the installation of two giant rocket-catching Mechazilla arms. A great deal of work has also been done on Starbase's orbital tank farm over the last two months, including the installation of the last few storage tanks, the sleeving of those tanks, a great deal of plumbing, and the start of real propellant deliveries. With the launch tower and orbital tank farm now more or less structurally complete and work already underway to prepare the tank farm to support its first booster tests, most of the work that may have been drawing focus and resources away from the ship and booster preparations appears to be wrapping up. That may be why, for the third time, SpaceX technicians began removing a number of Raptor engines from Super Heavy B4 around the start of October. Aside from removing around a third to half of Super Heavy's 29 Raptors, SpaceX also began slowly but surely installing parts of a steel heat shield designed to protect those engines during ground testing, ascent and and re-entry. New Raptors have also been trickling from Starbase's build site to the launch pad for installation on the booster and more engines will likely be reinstalled as heat shield installation progresses. Perhaps the most unusual part of recent Super Heavy B4 work is the apparent application of some kind of foam around several racks of pressure vessels, hydraulic manifolds, and umbilical connections installed around the booster's base. Those racks will eventually be enclosed inside steel arrow covers already staged beside Super Heavy. A number of Twitter users believe that the foam being selectively applied is for acoustic deadening, meant to protect sensitive electronics, valves, and computers from the brutal environment Super Heavy itself will produce at liftoff and during ground testing. Ultimately, with Booster 4 work ramping back up and the zenith of orbital pad construction activity now likely behind SpaceX, preparations for major Super Heavy testing will hopefully resume. SpaceX has yet to perform a full Super Heavy wet dress rehearsal or fire up more than three Raptors on a booster or ship prototype. With any luck, that will finally change in the final months of 2021. Now, it's no secret that Super Heavy is an absolute beast. Dubbed Super Heavy, this booster is the Starship's best friend and likely to become the king of space, weighing in at 300 tons empty and capable of holding more than 3,000 tons of propellant. Functioning as the engine section, the aft end of Super Heavy is likely where the fate of early booster prototypes will lie. For the most part, Super Heavy is just a colossal duo of steel propellant tanks that is, to an extent, even simpler than its smaller Starship upper stage, which needs two types of Raptor engines, flaps, a bevy of maneuvering thrusters, and more. 
However, at the booster's base, SpaceX must design, fabricate, and assemble a nightmarishly crowded and complex mechanical structure capable of mounting, fueling, and powering anywhere from 29 to 33 Raptor engines. Simultaneously, that structure and all associated plumbing must withstand the force and pressure of more than 2,000 metric tons of cryogenic liquid oxygen and the 7,500 tons of thrust those Raptors can generate. That's just the bare minimum, though. Beyond the extraordinary mechanical stress it must withstand, Super Heavy's thrust section also needs to be able to survive the hellish, violent environment created by almost three dozen powerful rocket engines on one side, while the structure is effectively half-submerged in a cryogenic fluid, subjecting the puck and dome to brutal thermal conditions. Last but certainly not least, the exterior of Super Heavy's thrust structure must be able to survive the mechanical and thermal hell of hypersonic atmospheric re-entry, with zero cushioning of the blow. The forces involved are difficult to imagine. At full thrust, Super Heavy Booster 4's 29 Raptor engines, eventually expanding to 33 on future cores, will likely produce more than 5,500 metric tons of thrust, making it both the largest and most powerful rocket booster ever built or tested. At full thrust, those 29 Raptors will consume more than 17 metric tons of cryogenic liquid methane and oxygen, equivalent to around 10 Tesla Model 3's worth of propellant every single second. Wow, every single second? Wow! Including smaller secondary runs for each Raptor engine, Super Heavy's engine section will likely contain miles of plumbing for highly flammable explosive and high-pressure liquid and gaseous methane and oxygen. All 29 Raptors also need to be connected to Super Heavy's power supplies and avionics systems, demanding still more miles of wiring. Ultimately, Musk says that the next generation of Starship's Raptor engine, V2.0, is a major improvement in simplification, presumably making life a bit easier for the engineers that have to design Super Heavy's hellish engine section plumbing and the technicians that have to fabricate and assemble it. However, there's just no getting around the fact that a single rocket booster with dozens of engines is going to have an extraordinarily complex thrust section. Only time will tell if SpaceX's extensive launch vehicle expertise is up to the task. And that's all the information we have for you today. If you like what my team and I are doing and would like to help assist us by giving us a nudge, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. You see it? It's right there. See that? Yeah. Just go ahead and click it, you know, take a look at it. If you like what you see, put a ring on it, I don't know. We will be so glad to receive your contributed comments and support. Everyone's support will be the motivation for us to create more quality content. Now, wouldn't that be grand? And if you enjoyed today's episode, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss out on future episodes of Great SpaceX. As always, this is Kevin, and I'll be seeing you next time.